Good morning, folks. It's Harrison with Mainly Acres Farms. We have ourselves a full day today, so uh, let's go over here to the sewing machine, take a few things apart, and then we're going to hit the road. Alrighty, I've already loosened my nut here on my flywheel, so I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. Uh, and if you guys don't have yourselves a lock washer on your machine, you're definitely going to want to do that. Um, mine didn't come with a lock washer here, but it definitely helps keep your flywheel into place while you're sewing. So we're just going to go ahead and work this flywheel off of the post here. So now that we have this taken apart, I'm going to run over to the machine shop. I'm going to have a channel grooved out along the uh, diameter here. So that way we can start electrifying the machine. So come along with me. folks we made it to the machine shop also known as my parents house so I just wanted to show you the, the view out here before we get out So that means I have a final reveal to show you guys. All right, so this is the flywheel now that it's been all machined out, milled out, and ready to rock and roll. Now, I do want to share with you guys some tips if you're going to do this yourself, the machining work. Um, be very patient and set aside a good weekend of time to get this done. You're going to have to do a lot of balancing on this flywheel. You might have to true up uh, the circumference a bit before you can do any work on it. Um, and just be prepared for that because I really wasn't prepared. So when we put the shaft down the center to hook it into the metal lathe, um, we ended up having to do a lot of milling over here to be able to get this to be balanced so it wouldn't wobble and do the herky-jerky all over the place uh, so my suggestion to you guys out there uh, if you're especially if you're just a hobby uh, metal worker and you're not too experienced I would send this off and have somebody professional do it for you guys because they're gonna have the larger equipment and a lot more tools to be able to handle a project like this uh, we had to end up coming up with some customized tools to be able to cut the channel around the circumference because we were using a mini lathe um, so that's just something to think about if you guys are thinking about tackling this project here so uh, I've already showed you guys how to remove this from your sewing machine so I figured I would show you guys how to put it back on and to make sure that your ball bearings are riding in the correct channels in here another thing I wanted to talk about is um, I've talked about oiling the machine um, but this is a good point to talk to you guys about putting some grease in there and in all up in these channels here and on the inner channel here it is really good to put some type of a gear grease in there so that way when your ball bearings are running around in the channel they'll be nice and lubricated now if you guys don't have any gear grease here's a substitute that'll work just as well and that's your plain old Vaseline. So if you guys don't have any gear grease, uh, just take yourself some Vaseline, um, put it on some Q-tips, and just run it around the tracks inside of here, so that way when you install it on here, it'll be nice and lubricated for you. 
since we're on the topic about grease, I figured I would show you guys a few more points on the sewing machine that it's a good idea to go ahead and put some grease on since you already have your flywheel off here. The next one I want to talk about is right inside of this channel here, you guys have some ball bearings, so you're going to want to make sure to put a nice coating of grease on those ball bearings. Another good place to put grease is right inside of this little channel inside of your sewing machine frame. And the reason why it's important to put plenty of grease in there and to clean it out here a bit, you guys can see mine was pretty dirty. It needed this servicing. Um, is your Pitman rod runs back and forth in this channel. And so it's a good idea to put a heavy amount of grease in there to allow this action to be a lot more smoother. You can also take some more and get and rub it on this surface as you're sliding the Pitman rod back and forth just to ensure that you are coating everything in there. So you guys can see that it's a lot smoother. It feels a lot smoother to me. Another place you want to concentrate your grease on is down here. So what we'll do is we'll push the Pitman rod back. We'll get a bit more Vaseline and we will rub it along the Pitman rod on the top and also on the side of it and we'll just work that right on in there go back and forth with it now you also know when you uh, move your rod all the way to this side your uh, the end here it's going to shoot out the end you guys can put some grease on there on all four sides if you want especially on the side that has the teeth there and I'm just going to use my finger here just to make sure I get everything and not have a bunch of excess good deal so now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back because there was a little bit of extra there that shot out the back and the, that's a good thing too is when you see that because you want to make sure that there's plenty of grease in there and you can always come back you know and wipe off the excess alrighty I'm gonna go wash up and then we'll go ahead and continue installing the flywheel Alrighty, now that I'm all washed up, it's time to get this flywheel on. The first thing that I want you guys to notice is on your shaft, on your flywheel, you're going to have a little set screw on the side of the shaft, and that set screw is supposed to fit right in there to that cutout on your flywheel. So what I like to do is just go ahead and push the shaft till it won't go anymore, till the cams kind of rest on the back and that's going to kind of put the set screw at a position like this so when I go to put my flywheel on I'm going to want to make sure that that divot is in that same orientation and that's really going to help us out when installing the flywheel so let's go ahead and slap it on all right so here's the next important part in order to be able to get your flywheel to set against the frame in that little keyhole to go in that divot, you have to align up your ball bearings and arms in the correct grooves. So this one that I'm moving here is your uh, upper um, needle driving bar and that's going to go in the outmost channel on your flywheel. Now the the Pitman rod, which is on the bottom, let me see if I can scan down here if there's enough light to see. No, it's not really going to pick it up, but your Pitman rod kind of runs in line with this part of the frame here. And you're going to want to make sure to line that in the innermost groove and kind of make sure that those are in place so that way you can set your flywheel all the way up to the base of the machine so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm going to put the upper one in its track I'm going to move the Pitman rod over and there we go as you guys probably heard and saw before I said anything the flywheel is now completely pressed up against the frame and it's good to go Alrighty, the flywheel is in place and it's nice and set in there. You guys can see when I 
move the flywheel, stuff is moving for me, so that's always a good sign. So the next thing we're going to want to do now that the flywheel is completely up against the frame is throw on our lock washer there and then take our nut here and thread that on the end. So make sure to snug that down real good and the lock washer will take care of the rest. Alright, I'm going to zoom out and show you guys that everything's functioning and working good. Alrighty, so the flywheel is all installed and everything went very nicely together there. So the next thing I need to do is to mount a piece of wood to the underside of my table so that way I can extend it out a bit to be able to mount the motor to the table and run it using one of these belts. Uh, what this is, is this is a uh, belt that came off of a printer. So you guys know that I'm into junking, and uh, when I run across uh, stuff like this, I like to hang on to it, because I never know when I'm going to need it. And I'm glad I did, because I have this one here, and a whole bunch more, in case this one breaks. So that's why it's always good to do some junk and you'll be surprised at what you'll find. So that's all I'm going to have for you guys for tonight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this video uploaded to you guys so you guys can see what I've been up to. Um, but hopefully I will have the finished, um, complete version of how to electrify your sewing machine up by tomorrow afternoon. So uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know a lot of you guys were excited about... Um, the uh, modifications that I needed to do to get this electrified so hopefully by tomorrow evening I'll be sewing on an electrified sewing machine. Thank you guys for tuning in and as always take care and spend time with that family.